I'm actually going to do the injury report today, and the reason why is just because I think that some, you know, Alex is not always as prepared to kind of talk about some of that. Obviously, uh, going back to the Troy game here real quickly, and then we'll kind of hit on that. Um, really, really disappointed in our players were too. Uh, the, um, you know, the didn't play as disciplined as what we need to play in order to have success. And I think you can look at a few factors in that and some things that we'd preach to our players about. Um, you know, we give up to me explosion plays on defense and we're unable to, you know, create a turnover. Uh, offensively, we turned the ball over too many times. And uh, and then just the um, uh, untimely penalties, uh, kicking game uh, didn't really uh, help us in any form or fashion. Uh, field position just didn't play well. And that's something that, you know, obviously we've got to do. Uh, we'd, we're in position sometimes to make plays, and we didn't make the plays either. And I mentioned after the game about I don't know that we've got a, a tremendous amount of confidence. You got to find you know uh, find some opportunities to go back and show the players kind of when they were playing Alabama or Georgia and see some of the productivity that they had uh, during that time frame. It certainly um, this year has been a. Um, a difficult year in relation, you know, from the, from an injury standpoint, and and that's created also, I think, a little bit of fluctuation in how we've played because of just the nature of having to overcome some things. And as I'm getting ready to go over here, we've got a couple a, a new issue that all of a sudden's kind of popped up a little bit, and we've got to overcome it during this week of practice. Uh, kind of finishing up on Troy, though, we didn't we didn't have great Wednesday and Thursday practices, and it just they weren't as focused as what I'd like to see. And that generally uh, will resonate on uh, on Saturday as it did. And so, you know, we got to put it behind us, move forward. And uh, today we're uh, go back out. I thought, you know, Sunday uh, players bounced back. And uh, we need to have a good bounce back day today. And, and we need to get some other players kind of ready to play. But uh, kind of going through, and the reason why I'm doing this is just um, – I have different media outlets that obviously I talk to during the week, and I seem to get sometimes the same questions, and sometimes those questions don't necessarily – I'd like to just kind of end them all at one point in time. But So I'm just going to go down through who's out currently, and then I'm going to go ahead and say if they're out for the season just so that I won't have those inquiries anymore about, well, when's this guy coming back, that type of thing. Uh, quarterback Frank Maxwell, he's out for the season with an upper body injury. Uh, wide receiver R.J. Turner is out for the season with a lower body injury. Wide receiver Daniel Hollander's out for the season with a lower body injury. Tight end Alec Osborne's out for the season, lower body injury. Wide receiver Tyler Kane's out for the season, lower body injury. Running back Nate Metters out for the season, lower body injury. Uh, new one from this last week, obviously, quarterback Braley Brown. He's out for the season with a lower body injury, but that does not look like that's going to be surgical for him, which is, you know, that's kind of one of those horrific injuries that, that sometimes happen. So it's. Uh, Nice to know that that does not look surgical at this point in time. Uh, Jacob Tyson, who we thought would be back here at some point in time, uh, you know, that same time of the frame that well, hopefully it was going to be around the same time we got David Elias back here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but Jacob Tyson is now out for the season as he had another surgery today with lower body injury. Uh, Brady Wilcutt, who's an offensive lineman, uh, has been out with an illness. Um, it looks like that he might return here shortly, which would be great from a scout team standpoint, if nothing else. Uh, Chase Region uh, was uh, had an upper body injury in this past ball game. He will be out for this ball game. Cody Robinson, linebacker Cody Robinson, who's missed the last several ball games, uh, is uh, going to try to return to practice a little bit this week. But I'd say he's very, very questionable in relation to his release. In terms of the other people that are questionable for this uh, ball game, uh, Brandon Bridgers, offensive lineman Brandon Bridgers, uh, is questionable. He's got an, a lower body injury, and I'd say he's probably more doubtful uh, than questionable at this point in time. Offensive lineman Keaton Baggs is questionable with a lower body injury. Offensive lineman Frank Sutton is questionable with a lower body injury. A cornerback Junior Williams uh, unfortunately re-injured uh, a previous injury. He uh, has an upper body injury. Uh, he would be questionable at this point in time. Uh, cornerback Fernando Joseph uh, was injured in this last ball game, has a lower body injury. I would say he's questionable at this point in time. I, I mentioned last week that I expected Braxton Moore to play in this last ball game. He was unable to get to that point. Uh, I do um, I do expect him to play. 
Uh, I think Rashawn Caesar's repetitions can go up this next week also. Uh, as you know, Last week was his first week to return. And then Mr. Lane's been dealing with some personal issues kind of throughout the course of the season. Did not look like on Sunday that some of those were going to uh, that, uh, that it might impact his abilities to be able to play this week in the game. I think we've resolved some of those things. Uh, I don't know how much playing time that he'll get because I'm not ex still exactly sure about the extent of practice uh, at this point in time. But it does look like he will be up and he will be there for Saturday for the game on, on Saturday. Uh, so that was um, some good news, obviously, uh, in relation to that. Um, going in, obviously, against Arkansas State this week, um, you know, I, uh, I voted for them to be the conference champion at the start of the season. I, I felt like that from a uh, total team's perspective, this was going to be the, the, the potentially the best team that we saw. Uh, and I think that that's probably accurate. I think they're the cream of the Sun Belt at this point in time. Uh, a lot of that is due to their uh, just a really fantastic quarterback, Freddie Knight, and obviously he was the the All Conference player from last year. He missed some games early on, and and you know they struggled quite honestly offensively uh, early in the season. He's back, and he's and their offense is really clicking. I think at a high level right now, they're good up front. Uh, they've got um, a couple really dynamic running backs, and they've got a couple dynamic receivers, and so they're well rounded along those lines. Uh, but he's certainly the cog that makes it go, uh, both in the run game because he is a threat to run the football, and so they do a lot of read zone stuff, and they'll mix their formations up a little bit to try to create some extra gaps. Uh, and then once you, uh, they do a good job of getting the receivers involved, also whether it be screen game or um, getting them involved in the run game as a, as an extra running back, especially McKissick, who's a, obviously a guy that's been around for I don't know probably 20 years and who's just a tremendous player. Uh, but they have the ability to stretch the ball down the field also, and Knighton is really good off those play action passes. Defensively, they're big up front, move well, really uh, quality linebackers, quality secondary, not tremendously complex really on either side of the football, uh, and so they're very efficient with what they do. And But they have enough complexities to where all of a sudden it creates some issues for you from a schematic standpoint. Uh, they, and they're good in their kicking game. They they are um, they require that you spend a significant amount of time on them because they will formate you in their punt group, their kickoff coverage group, uh, their PAT field goal, and then they have dangerous returners um, with McKissick uh, being you know a really uh, outstanding kickoff return guy. Uh, Blaze Taylor uh, I think is kind of taken over now on the punt returns and. Uh, another dynamic guy who's the one of their, their starting corner. And so they've got a really complete football team, and they're playing with a lot of confidence at this point in time. And as I've always kind of said, you know, in this conference, it, you know, they, uh, they're mature and they're healthy. And so obviously they've got a, uh, that's a huge threat for us. So questions? Yeah. Um, you know, finally we get this, um, get these three games out of the way, we get, get back at home. Is there a, uh, they mentioned it being disappointing and it being a confidence issue right now. Is at least being home doing anything for you guys? Well, I think it saves our bodies just a little bit because obviously that's a difficult travel. And every t every week when you are traveling, and I, I, the way that I understand it, we're going to be the most traveled team by the end of the year of anybody in the country. Um, the um, you know that that can wear on you just a little bit, and I think especially. Uh, when you have young players, uh, you know, the younger the football team that you have that's out there playing anyway, um, environment I think can in impact them dramatically more than it can a more seasoned player, which obviously makes sense. And so there are those, uh, it will be nice to have to be back home. Yeah. You know, and um, you mentioned the way practice on Wednesday and Thursday. Is that, and you've been doing this long enough, is that one of those things as a coach you can kind of, you can tell what's going on and see how that carries these through games, or is that one of those? Things you probably worried about on the bus or getting there, like here we go. It it did a little bit, quite honestly, because it, generally uh, that Wednesday practice is very very situational in nature. I'm talking about you're down in distance, your vertical field uh, positions, even a little bit of clock management, and it, you know if that day goes poorly, then your Thursday practice uh, is not quite as clean. Uh, now we traditionally, as most coaches will do, we call it Wicked Wednesday. And Wednesdays are going to be more difficult days. They tend to be the, the really the more difficult looks that you can get in those situations, with Thursday being a little cleaner look. 
And I just didn't think our Thursday practice, even against the looks that were a little bit more stable looks, uh, was was very good. And again, I think it's, uh, I think some of this is emotional in the sense that, you know, this has been a difficult season. It's been frustrating. We've had to get up every week, which is difficult to do. Also, I had um, reached out to a couple friends this week, and uh, one of them had a real tough game this last week. And he just said, you know, we were doing really well early in the season. Then all of a sudden, we had to start playing every week against an opponent that was good, and nobody was getting any breather. And it just trying to stay on that emotional high. And for us, Generally, with our schedule outside of Nickel State, we have to kind of be on that emotional high each and every week, and that's difficult to carry forward also. Uh, so we've just got to go back and, and regroup and, you know, um, play and correct the mistakes and do what we can do. Did you address that when it came all the way to Benjamin last week? And kind of sure. What was your message to them coming out of that to inform the practice? Well, I mean, I think this is a relatively intelligent team, and I think that as – uh, most of these things, I think, are things that just about anybody can point out. Whenever you're turning the football over, as we did, it's difficult to win a game. If you're going to give up that many explosion plays on defense, it's difficult to win the game. If you're not kicking the ball great, it's difficult to win a game. Uh, if you're having uh, penalties, uh, which we kind of got ourselves clean of, and they rose back up here the other, you know, uh, the other day, then it's going to be tough to win a game. And and uh, especially against good competition. I, I think Troy, uh, especially with their quarterback back, I think that they're, you know, a, a force to be kind of contended with here the rest of the year. Uh, the trenches were, were an issue against Troy, uh, as good as they were up front. Right. You mentioned, you know, Arkansas State is also big, pretty good up there. How, do they comp- how does their front compare to Troy's defensive front? Well, I, I think Arkansas State's front's probably better than Troy's uh, defensive front. And, and so obviously with, you know, you have the potential of four offensive linemen being out this week. And that uh, can impact, you know, us a little bit in relation to that. And so we have to kind of plan around it. I think one of the difficult things for the coaches this year in trying to plan around the injuries is, you know, you'd like to go in with certain game plans that you've worked up in the summer. Uh, but those were all contingent on you having your people. And then all of a sudden you don't have those people. and. And some of those things, all the prior work that you did is maybe uh, um, that's not going to happen now. And so that requires longer hours and, and more time in relation to dealing with what you have currently and, and then moving forward. Yeah, I guess it's kind of, it would be kind of an open, uh, oversimplification to say the game plan defensively this week is fine number nine. Obviously, there's nine is good, and so is J.D. McKissick. Like you said, it seems like they've been there for 20 years. But... You know, do they have the personnel as well? Do you focus too much on you know maybe two, three guys? They have other guys that they're just as capable of beating. Yeah, they've they've done a good job recruiting. I think Blake's done a wonderful job. They're an outstanding coach, and and you know it's amazing from a program standpoint that they've. You know, I, I think that there's some programs that have success because they are successful programs. Uh, there's you know, programs that don't have success and generally those tend to be pretty systemic in nature. There's always something wrong with the place because you but I I think that with what Arkansas State has done uh, here recently over the last five years in terms of investing in the program and the facilities and all that kind of thing has allowed for, you know, several coaches to come through and do a really outstanding job. But they've recruited well and uh, they've they've done well not just in the high schools but in the junior colleges and and they have some things that they can sell there i think and obviously the the governor of the state of arkansas being an arkansas state grad has really helped them significantly in terms of some things that they have opportunities to do and i know that for a fact because i've I've, I've known all those coaches obviously that have gone through that program from gus malzahn to hugh freeze to to blake to um you know, it, um, it's one of those things to where they've they've done a nice job, and so consequently they've recruited well, and, and they're they're in pretty good shape at this point in time. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the uh, the backs earlier. I think they were like 14th in the nation in rush yards uh, per game. You have two you have two pretty good backs, Michael Gordon and uh, Johnson White. Uh, how do you put the guys in place to stop those two guys? Yeah, they're different types of running backs, you know. And I've always been a fan of having some different types of running backs because I think that you can take that same play, let's say it's a zone read, and one back's going to run it in one one way, and you know how he's going to play it, but then all of a sudden that other back comes in, and maybe the other back's a little shiftier, or 
type of guy, and all of a sudden he hits a, a hole that you're not really expecting the, the ball to hit, even though the play is uh, structurally the same. And they've got two really different types of backs, a big back and a small back, and uh, they're both very, very effective with what they do. And they're going to try to run the football. I mean, that's that's who they are. That's what they want to do first. And so you have to stop the run. And, you know, defensively that's always the, you identify – what they want to do, and then you try to stop that, and then you worry about the other stuff later on. And we know that they're going to want to run the football, and their the problem becomes in that their quarterback is dynamic, as I mentioned, in terms of being a runner. So it, it you um, it, he helps control the backside with his own read. Uh, it's not one of, he's not one of those individuals that you can just say you take the quarterback if you don't have any other support over the top, he can make a guy miss. And then he's really dangerous, I think, with the play actions because he has a live enough arm to where he can throw the ball down the field. Obviously, that can impact the pass rush too because you have to respect the run. But the other problem that he, if if, if nothing's there for him, he will, you know, he will pull it down. He'll take off and and run with it and be effective. And so he's very much a Colton Browning type of quarterback, you know. And and that's kind of what we were doing with Colton when when he was here was we were utilizing some of the strengths that Colton had in relation to those things. Arkansas State likes to run the ball. Are they most similar? Have similarities? Anybody played this year? I think this is probably um, you know our biggest challenge in relation to covering the field. And when I say covering the field, I think that I'm talking about horizontally from sideline to sideline and vertically from end zone to end zone. I'll give you a couple of examples here. With Georgia Southern, they, they, they weren't necessarily going to stretch the ball down the field. They're, it was going to be a horizontal game, and they were going to try to put you into space horizontally. Um, Idaho was a big vertical throw team, you know, with the Epps, the receiver, and, and they were going to push the ball down the field. But they weren't going to necessarily challenge you sideline to sideline. And so that's kind of – this This group's going to challenge you sideline to sideline, and they're, but they're also going to turn around and challenge you vertically with their with their passing game. And, and that generally makes for a pretty dynamic offense whenever you can obviously stretch the defense that much. You know, um, I guess one of the few bright, bright spots in Northman this year is uh, Marcus Green over there, the way he's kind of grown up. Have you had to get him involved more than – you would have, you would have liked, but um, you know, just how much has he matured from when you threw him in there to the kind of player he is now? No, I, I've told Marcus individually, and I've told him in front of the team, and I'm really, really proud of him because I think that, um, you know, when you start looking at some of the other receivers that were in our program this year, those guys were pretty proven players and and dynamic players in their own right. Uh, and so, so you know, obviously for us. Um, we needed to, for a couple of reasons, we need to make sure that they had the ball in their hand, those receivers. And it was also comforting, I think, for having a redshirt freshman quarterback that you had a more mature group of receivers out there that he could throw to, guys that knew the structure, knew the coverages, could adjust for him and kind of help him out. Uh, obviously, that did not happen. I mean, it was there was there we had some injuries that impacted that group pretty dramatically when you start talking about, again, Tyler Kane who was a starter, Alec Osborne, who was a starter, uh, R.J. Turner, who worked himself into being a starter because the absence of Tyler Kane and some shuffling around, and then you lose Jalen Holly and Rashawn Caesar and and so on. And so consequently, that, that, that group kind of got decimated, and we needed somebody to step up. Now, getting back to Marcus, um, very, very proud of Marcus because early on he wasn't taking as many snaps, and, and that's harder to grow up, I think, sometimes whenever you're not taking that many snaps. And then all of a sudden he's thrust into a role to where – you know, he's certainly an outstanding athlete and a guy that uh, can impact the game and where he's thrown into a role to where now he is the, becomes a little bit of the focal point of the offense. Um, and then obviously for Garrett trying to get adjusted to Marcus because every receiver has their own little body language that they give to a quarterback. So I think Marcus has not just done a great job in terms of making plays, but it's the him being right uh, in terms of what he's doing and taking pride in that and overcoming it and uh, getting in better shape and all those other kinds of things that are just part of being a really good re receiver. And now, you know, with his emergence and his maturity, getting a Jalen back and Rashawn back, now you've got three guys that 
you know, all three can make, you know, uh, give the defense a lot of struggles. You know, I was, um, I was talking to a gentleman, not to get off point here, but it, it uh, brings a little bit of a uh, analogy to kind of, I've got a gentleman that's a good friend of mine that's in the oil business. And so he called me and said, how are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm kind of hanging in there. It's been kind of a difficult season with some of the other things going on. I said, how are you doing? Because obviously the oil business was booming for him and he was doing really, really well. And that thing's kind of shut off for him. And he said, oh, you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's cyclic. You're going to have these years where all of a sudden this kind of stuff happens. And so you just kind of prepare for it. And, you know, there's going to be some lean years. You just look forward because it will come back. And, you know, we'll rebound. And we'll be better because of all this, you know, when it's all said and done. And I, and I said, well, I, I can kind of identify with that a little bit. And so getting back, Marcus Green, as you mentioned, was thrust into a, a situation that was probably not necessarily fair at the age that he's at. But he grasped a hold of it, and so thusly, the future looks bright with guys like Marcus Green in the program now because of the experiences he's had this year.